Okay guys, what is up? Tominator here. So in my last video I spoke about my biggest disappointment with bodybuilding these days, and that's that the top guys barely compete anymore. But we all know the real elephant in the room is the physiques themselves. These HGH slash insulin slash food baby, whatever you want to call it, these bubble guts that leave them looking eight months pregnant even when they're shredded down at sub 3% body fat, it's unnatural man, it's disgusting. And it's been going on for way too long, as we can see here with this picture of Ronnie, I believe back in 2003. I mean, this is the only way that the guy could possibly hold a vacuum, because no chance of that beer belly being sucked in. His ribcage has gone into permanent hibernation, it's nowhere to be seen. Even today, we still see this shit. Now, I would love to think that this pic of Dennis Wolf is photoshopped, because it certainly doesn't look like this should be real. But when you consider that it was taken from backstage, the audience is behind him, right? Then, yeah. It seems like whenever these guys hit a back pose these days, they just forget about their stomachs and let it all hang out. And they all do it too, it's not just Wolf. It's like, um, you know, they think that they don't even have to try to hold it in because their back is turned to us and we can't see it. Do you even comprehend angles, brah? So here he is again, hitting a back pose, not thinking about the poor people to the side of the stage who would be seeing him from a wider angle. I mean, this is just disrespectful, man. It's inconsiderate. Think about those fans who probably paid good money to sit this close to the stage, and this is what they're rewarded with. They have to look at this anytime these guys hit a back double bicep or a rear lat spread. It's despicable, man. Even guys you wouldn't normally associate with a bubble gut still have it, like Dexter in full Ninja Turtle mode here with the protruding turtle shell abs. Even Jay Cutler was not immune to this pitfall. You can clearly see his abs sticking out further than his chest here. So, many people like to say that Jay never had distension. That's bullshit. He just hit it better than most. It's true that for a mass monster, Jay was one of the best in keeping the gut in check. Big Remy now is in a similar boat, and I hope and pray to God that, that, that he can keep it that way, because unlike Jay, who always had a wide and blocky midsection, even if it wasn't very distended, um, Remy has an unbelievably tight waist for a man of his size, so that's very commendable. But I want to take it back to the beginning, before the train completely fell off the track. And here we can see the first indications of what was to come. Because make no mistake about it, Dorian Yates was the first bodybuilding champion to popularize the wide bloated belly look and make this sort of waistline acceptable. And this is of course the seminal 1993 Mr. Olympia where he ushered in a newfound era of mass. Unfortunately, however, it looks like his waist also came along for the ride because it's bigger than ever before. Now true, this is, uh, you know, it's not really that distended here. You can't call this a bubble gut by any means, but it is nonetheless a blocky midsection, right? Especially when you compare him to the man standing beside him, Flex Wheeler, in some of the very best shape of his life, looking so much more aesthetic it's not even funny. Here in the ab and thigh, I think Flex smokes him. Many people praise Dorian for his ab and thigh pose, and truth be told, I agree that he is one of the best mass monsters to ever hit it, but compared to more shapely competitors with smaller waists and better abs, I don't really think he fares that well. But regardless, whether you love him or hate him, you can't really fault Dorian for having a bubble gut. He never really did. He did come in bloated a couple of years, but at least he never looked pregnant on stage like Ronnie did. I mean, by today's standards, this midsection is positively statuesque. But enough about all that, because in this video I wanted to focus on the drugs, specifically the HGH and insulin, because that's really at the heart of the issue. So I actually came across an article on MD from not that long ago. I believe it was published in 2015 or 2016, where they interviewed Sean Ray, Dorian Yates, and Kevin Lebroni, and, and they asked them some pretty pointed questions about their drug use. Like, what steroids did they take? Uh, what were their dosages? Did they use GH or insulin, etc., etc.? And I would have preferred a video format so that we would have proof that it is really them, um, but given the medium, muscular development, uh, which is a pretty reputable and established brand in the bodybuilding industry, I think we can safely assume that it is in fact who they say it is and not just some kind of uh, fabricated impersonation. Um, but anyway, I'll put a link to it in, this, in the description below. It's a four-part article, so it'll take some time to finish, but it's really pretty illuminating stuff. And for those of you who have always wondered what these pro bodybuilders were taking, this is a must-read. Uh, so yeah, I gathered some quotes from there, and this was what Dorian Yates had to say when asked about his GH use. So he claims he started using it way back in 1991. I believe that the early 90s, perhaps even the late 80s, is when growth hormone first started gaining popularity in bodybuilding. Now I googled all over the place to see if Haney had ever used it, um, because based on his size and that telltale split between his abs, I would hazard to say yes, he did. 
but I wasn't able to find any evidence one way or the other, so this is pure speculation on my part. So if you can confirm below whether Lee Haney ever used growth hormone, please share that with us. Um, but yeah, to continue, Dorian says that he used four IUs a day, uh, but the gains he made weren't very noticeable. And I just wanted to point out first that the lack of a bubble gut here. Go and watch him in the 1991 Mr. Olympia and try to find a point where he looks pregnant. You won't be able to. That sort of thing just didn't even really exist back then. So this is pre-insulin days, right? Um, so that suggests to me immediately that growth hormone is not responsible for the bubble gut, or at least it's not the primary cause. But we'll get more into that in a moment. In 1992, he doubled his dosage of GH and started making some real gains. <laughs> and that's interesting in insight into his 1993 transformation there at the bottom. I'll give you a second to read all that. And to continue, he basically explains that the reason he looks so much bigger in 93 is because he didn't over-diet and was able to hold on to all the gains he made from the previous two off-seasons. Uh, so that's why it seemed like he had taken such a giant uh, leap forward. But now we get into the juicy stuff, the insulin. Now, Dorian says he only used insulin for his last Mr. Olympia appearance in 1997. Believe it or not, you know, this is what he, he wrote. So... Anyway, uh, I think we can all agree that this was the worst shape he ever brought. Like he says, he may have been bigger, but he wasn't better. He looked uncharacteristically soft in many shots, and it certainly didn't help that his arms had mostly melted away due to his torn bicep and the torn tricep he suffered just weeks before the show. So you can't blame it entirely on the drugs, but Dorian himself does imply here that his midsection became distended because of it. And here he summarizes his lack of love for the slin. So check the pictures below of him from 1995, which was arguably his all-time best shape before he started messing around with insulin. And note the difference in the conditioning compared to what we just saw from 97. Dorian directly blames the insulin for this. And yes, sad to say, we do see that same lack of separation constantly today. Um, look at Branch Warren and the way that his shoulders just kind of blend into his pecs as if it's all one muscle group. No separation to be found in the back either. This guy is just like a big blob of muscle. Sure, he's got great conditioning if you're talking about vascularity or that hard grainy look, but where is the separation and the definition? You don't see those finer details in the arms or the back like what you used to back in the 80s and 90s. And here's another example in Justin Compton. Now, let me preface this by saying I like this guy's physique a lot. He's got great shape and proportions with the huge arms and delts and the slim waistline, good quads, so the guy's got a ton of potential. But do you even ab day bra? <laughs> like, how do you manage to have shredded glutes but not even visible abs? This is truly a baffling phenomenon that you only see with modern day bodybuilders. I don't even get how it's physically possible to reach such low body fat that you can see striations in your butt, but not even have a six pack, right? Um, so I would bet solid money that this is drug induced because it simply isn't natural. And based on what Dorian just said about the disappearance of crisp separation, insulin is my number one suspect. And maybe you just think that this is a badly timed photo and he's not flexing his abs. Nope, because <laughs> even in the ab and thigh you can barely see anything. It's like someone took a magic eraser and rubbed out his abs. Um, but that's okay, don't worry man, because as long as the judges get their fix of shredded glutes, you'll still place well. <laughs> it's truly bizarre some of the things that are happening in bodybuilding these days. But back to Dorian, because he's not quite finished. So this is the crux of the argument. For many, a year, for many years, people attributed this bubble gut syndrome to growth hormone, claiming that internal organ growth was responsible for the protruding stomachs. But keep in mind that this growth is irreversible, meaning that once your organs become enlarged, they'll always stay that way. There's no chance for them to shrink down again. And if that was the case, how do you explain guys like Kai Green, looking like he's about to give birth at the 2010 Olympia, then being able to dial it in two years later in 2012. Or how about the latest bubblegut mascot in Rolly Winkler, looking like he's carrying twins at the 2015 Arnold Classic, then slimming down significantly just six or seven months later for the 2015 Mr. Olympia. If this was truly the result of internal organ growth, then this would be impossible. So I don't think it's the GH, at least not mainly the GH, right? It has to be the insulin. As to why it's the insulin, that's a subject for a whole nother video. Um, if you're interested in hearing how insulin causes pregnancy, not literally of course, but you get what I'm saying, then let me know in the comments below. And of course, we can't discount the copious amounts of food as well. Dennis Wolf attributed his belly to the food baby he carries around because these guys are constantly force feeding themselves, trying to cram in as much calories and, and protein as possible. 
you know, this quest to get bigger and bigger, it takes its toll, right? Um, but I think if you remove the insulin and kept their diets exactly the same, we'd see a lot less pregnant looking bodybuilders on stage. That's just my suspicion. Okay, but now let's listen to what Kevin Lebroni has to say on the subject. So Kevin claims that he never used GH or insulin prior to 1996, and I find this a little surprising because probably most of his competitors had at least tried growth hormone before this, but then again we're talking about one of the most genetically gifted individuals in history, a guy who only needed four months to get ready for the Mr. O when most guys prepared year-round. Um, but anyway, Lavroni agrees with Dorian in that the gains he made while on GH and insulin were all qual quantity and not quality. He was heavier and still managed to win that show because, let's be honest, Flex Wheeler wasn't in his best shape either. But the next year at the 1997 Arnold, he wasn't so lucky. This time it threw off his conditioning so badly he dropped to 8th, which was his lowest placing ever. So that's the picture there on the left. And the one on the right is from the 1995 Olympia, one of his all-time best showings. And again, um, note the glaring lack of separation and definition in 97. He's pulling a Branch Warren with the shoulders just fusing into the chest. There's no clear split between the front delts and the pecs like what he usually has. And his abs also look disappointingly washed out, and we barely see any striations in the inner chest. This, to me, is the most telling example of how insulin use ruins a bodybuilder's physique. It's not just the bubble guts, guys. It's the smoothness, the way it blurs out the separation and definition. This is an almost universal effect you see today. Even when they come in really dry and ripped, you don't notice as much detail on bodybuilders now like what you used to back in the 80s and 90s. That level of polish is just sorely lacking. Um, yeah, but lastly, I wanted to just briefly mention Lee Priest as well. He wasn't featured in that MD article, but he always has been one of the more outspoken pros when it comes to his drug use. In fact, Lee participated in another segment with Tom Platts called Backstage Secrets of Professional Bodybuilders Revealed. So you can Google Backstage Secrets of Pros, it'll come up on YouTube, it's like a, it looked like a, it's divided into three parts, each over an hour, so it's pretty long and lengthy. Um, but the Golden Eagle here, he does some video interviews with six top pros, and they pixelated the faces and distorted the voices, although they did a pretty shitty job trying to cover up their identities, because you can clearly tell the first guy's Ronnie Coleman, the second dude is Aaron Baker, and Paul Dillette is in there as well, so... It's not a very, uh, <laughs> they didn't really do a very good job trying to conceal their identities, but anyway. Um, so Tom asked them a lot of very specific questions about their drug use and everything, and they talked very explicitly about it. So it's really fascinating stuff, but it's pretty long, and it gets a little boring at times, and I still haven't even um, watched the whole thing. But anyway, Lee was the only one who agreed to have his face shown. So say what you want about him, but the guy's got balls. That's gutsy, right? He was still competing at this time because I believe this video was taken back around 1998, just after the Olympia. At least that's what forums on the internet will tell you, and Lee admits he was taking two IUs of growth hormone for the past six weeks leading up into the show. Which isn't much, by the way. If you recall, Dorian said that he was taking four IUs back in 1991, and then eight in 92, so Lee was barely using any, and you can bet he wasn't messing around with insulin either. And it shows. Look how much sharper he looks here compared to Lebroni and Flex, especially in the lower body. Now, this might not all just be due to drugs, right? You know, guys come in different conditioning in different shows, whether, you, you know, you nail it or not. But um, in any case, the blonde myth was seriously underrated when it comes to the wheels, probably because everybody was too fixated on the world-class guns, probably the best of all time. Um, but he had some really good quads and calves, too. His conditioning looks great here, and I still need to finish watching the interview with him, but I don't believe he ever took insulin. So in conclusion, I think what bodybuilding needs in order to return to the glory days is to ban the use of insulin. It's made these guys bigger, but at the cost of a lot of things, you know? Like now we have bubble guts, we have them looking too smooth, no separation. So it's just not worth it. Now in practice, banning this could be very difficult, as unlike anabolic steroids, it's actually legal. So you can walk into your local pharmacy and have them write you a prescription for it, because di uh, diabetics need it to live. So I'm not sure how they could enforce it, I'm not even sure that it can be detected, but the bottom line is that the IFBB needs to stop rewarding guys who look like this, so that we can go back to champions looking like this. Alright homies, thanks for watching. As always, feel free to leave a like and subscribe for more if you enjoyed. I also love to read your comments, especially on a subject like this in which I'm admittedly not the subject matter expert. 
So let me come clean with you guys. I'm not a chemist, all right? I'm a 30-year-old lifetime natty, and I don't engage in this game of chemical warfare. So that's why the video was titled as a, as a question rather than a statement, because I can't claim with absolute certainty that this is the, that this is the case. I can only infer and draw conclusions based on what reputable sources like Dorian Yates and Kevin Leroni have to say. So it'd be very interesting to hear what those of you who are playing the drug game and who have personally experimented with GH and insulin have to say on the matter. Do you agree that insulin is the greater of the two evils here? Please share with us in the comments below. But until next time, I'm the Tominator signing off and I'll be back.